All right, what's up, y'all? Forrest here, and we're going to be doing the long-awaited, what am I titling this video? How to set up a Node.js project for GitHub Code Spaces. This is obviously the follow-up video to my video about GitHub Code Spaces, as well as GitHub.dev, and by the way, they're not the same thing. I have been seeing some people say that they're the same thing, but they're not. I go over everything about GitHub.dev and how that is free for everyone to use and exactly what that does versus GitHub Code Spaces, which is a lot more advanced because it has an associated compute and this, this, and that. Check out the video. I'll link it up in the eye right here down in the description or I'll probably forget. So just click on my uh, channel, go to videos and you'll see it. But to reiterate, GitHub.dev is free. GitHub Code Spaces, which is what we want to set up a Node.js project for today, is not. You actually have to have a team or enterprise GitHub account. And we're just going to have one people. Yes, one people, one person. And obviously, I am just going to be going with the $4 per user per month, which we only have one user. So we're just going to go $4 per month. However, since Code Spaces has its own cost, you can see all that right here for the compute and the storage. We're actually going to be setting up, well, you're going to be taking advantage of the sponsor of this video, privacy.com. And I'm going to create a virtual card for GitHub. We're going to make it look all pretty with a GitHub logo here. And I'm going to set the monthly limit to $10 per month because obviously we're going to have to be paying $4 per month. That's what we saw over here. $4 per month for one user. And then we have an extra $6 per month for storage and compute. Hopefully that'll be enough. If not, well, I guess we'll find out. I'll let y'all know. But that is actually just one of the many uses that privacy.com has, and they are the sponsor of today's video. So if you're interested in privacy.com for creating virtual cards to secure your online purchases and limit your purchases, like in this instance, and you get $5 when you sign up using my link, privacy.com slash forest, or click the link in the top of the description. And well, I'd appreciate it. You get the virtual cards. It's a win, win, win. So it appears GitHub tricked me. So. In order to set up a team, you have to create an organization. And that organization, I just named it FK Codes, right? Well, one, I figured out that you can't just go and use code spaces on your personal account because you have to do it on your team or organization or whatever. So if I come up and click code, instead of having a local and a code space tab, it just has a regular tab. So I'm like, oh, okay, well then maybe I just set it up over on my organization. That kind of sucks because I wish I could just do, you know, my, my personal account, but I can't. So I'll just set it up over here at the organization that I just set up. I forked the repository and same exact thing. Okay. Maybe you're not able to do it on a forked repository. Maybe you have to upload your own repository. So I did a little bit of digging and they actually said that you have to activate code spaces. I still don't know whether or not you can do it on a forked repository or not, but regardless, they said you had to activate it. So I came on over here and I hit your organizations and this is where you can Click on your organization settings. That's actually where I want to go. Make this a little bit bigger so y'all can see that. And then there's a code spaces tab right here. And I paid. They said it's only available to teams and organizations. So I figured when I set it up, I would pay and I'd be able to gain access to code spaces. But want to try code spaces? Please contact the code spaces team for access. I can't disable, allow for all users to select the use. I can't do anything. So. I wish they would have told me this before I paid for the month, but I guess this video is going to be put on the back burner even longer because I have to wait for the Code Spaces team to get back to me so I can actually access Code Spaces. And while I'm at it, I'm going to ask if I can make a Code Space on my personal account. And if not, can I fork something from my personal account and do it on my organization? And if not, I assume I'll just have to upload Project Engagement Social Leader on my organization in a private repository because this is not open source code. But that also means that I would have to add Ken and Tina to the team and I would have to pay an extra $4 per month per team member for the code space, right? And then everything else that has to do with the code space compute and the code space storage. <sighs> I don't know, honestly, I don't know. So we'll figure this out in this video, don't you worry. But for right now, I don't know. So I'll see y'all here in a couple of days, hopefully. Depends on how long it takes the code space team to get back to me. All right, so we're back and we got access. Now it's been about a week. However, in GitHub's defense, they did respond in about um, three and a half hours on the same day, but I had already, eh, I had already logged out for the day and I already committed to working on another video the next day. So here we are. 
but good on them. So let's go over this email real quick. I just kind of emailed, I like to ac access code spaces for my team, which is only me, but I want to test it out. And then I told them kind of what was going on just to make sure that it wasn't out of the ordinary. How, when I went to the settings for my organization that I created FK codes, I cannot click any buttons and that, that message at the top that we saw is, well, just, that's what's displayed on that page. And that is why I contacted them. But we also asked if we are able to create a code space on our personal account, on my personal account. And if not, can I at least like fork something from my personal account, even though it's private onto my organization and create a code space from there. And they did not address the creating a code space on my personal account, but they said you should be able to fork a repository into your organization to create a code space for it. So that's good. That's good to hear. And this is actually kind of a funny little deal here. You don't have access to code spaces yet. Sign up for the beta to get access. Now, I don't know what that means. When I set up code spaces, I obviously wasn't able to set up a code space for my personal account. However, this account, my personal account has an organization that now should have access to code spaces. So I'm curious as to why I'm getting this. And if in beta, I'm able to get access to code spaces on my personal account account and not just on, on an organization. If you know the answer to that, I'd love your feedback on that. Leave a comment down below. Maybe I'll do some research after this video, but we're taking too long. Let's get on into it. So let me remember. Okay. Your organizations got to go to organizations. That's it right there. Settings. And we want to come down to code spaces and there it is. So now I'm able to click these buttons, which is good. And code spaces are development environments in the cloud powered by VS code. Obviously I want to enable them and I'm going to allow for all users, which is me. So what does this mean? Code space is free until September 13th. Well, it is September 15th. So this is a bit outdated let's just jump right in anyway. <laughs> and access and security code spaces created for repositories within your organization could be either restricted to only that repository or granted read access to other repositories your organization owns. Well, since we're just testing everything out, I can always come back and change this. I'm going to leave it on disable because that seems like the most, the most secure with limited access, even though I'm the only person in my organization. Anyway, okay, I don't have to save it. Let's go ahead on to your organization profile, project engagement, and if all goes right, we forked this private repository from my personal profile, Forest Knight, on FK Codes organization, and we should be able to have a code spaces tab right here and there it is code spaces tab so we want to create a new code space for the repository that we're in obviously use project engagement and i don't know what machine type i want obviously this is the cheapest one but let's just go on the default remember we created that privacy virtual card so we should be good on that front so it doesn't charge us too much image found container built connecting and now it just wants us to get started with VS Code. All right, after doing some exploring and then getting distracted and now coming back however many days later to finish up this video, well, I'm gonna take you through it. So this is just like a regular get started with VS Code startup guide. And as you can see down here, this is a little bit different. Obviously it says welcome to Code Spaces and you are on our default image. It includes runtimes and tools for Python, Node.js, Docker, and more. We want a custom image instead. We'll talk about that in a little bit and so on and so forth. You get the idea. So overall, what you can do right now is go ahead and this is how I set up my project. I'm able to run just the client. I'm able to run just the server. This is a Mern stack application. So I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna come through to CD client. We have to install the dependencies first. So the dependencies that I need is React Scripts, which is automatically installed in Create React App. So you gotta make sure you have that dependency and something else that I need is Bootstrap. Now remember, this is just the bare minimum way of going about it. We're gonna go over having a custom image or custom, yeah, custom image here in just a second. But I also have some things on the server side that need to be installed, which is Morgan, and that is, that's it. So we're gonna wait for those to install and go from there. I lied, as the client is installing, we're just gonna run the server, so npm start. It should not work, because this is going to default directly to the home of the server. And we don't have anything on the home, so cannot get, as you can see. However, if I come in here, the server, go to my routes, and I change the data that we're pulling from MongoDB, because remember, this is my 
current MERN application, the database is already hooked up. All I had to do is make sure that I whitelisted this IP address or you just allow all IP addresses to access it, whatever floats your boat in MongoDB, then you're able to access your database and you should be good to go from there. So we're gonna save that, we're going to refresh, and as you can see, all the data from that database that we have already been connecting to on our local server is all right there. And now that the client side is done, let's npm start over here. And connecting to the forwarded port. And would you look at that? So we have the client side loading up. Now I am running into a cores problem because it is blocking this URL from passing the data from the back end to the front end. I have figured out some workarounds with this. However, I don't think those are really worth sharing because that's not the scope of this project. If you don't know about this particular project, all of this data is filtered through and we are displaying the information right here. Eh, I'll just show you a screenshot, how about that? So you can see what this is normally like and I'll show you why I'm not really worried about the workarounds right now. And that is because the custom image would be done a little bit differently in a Node.js and MongoDB application. So in order to set up a custom image, it doesn't matter where you are, you just come in here and you hit Control Shift P, start typing in dev container and code spaces, add development container configuration files, and it'll give you all of these options. So as you can see, this is your regular Node.js app. That's kind of what we're going over here. You have your Node.js and TypeScript, but as you can see right here, you have your Node.js and MongoDB. Now, I am going to click that. It is exactly the same as a regular Node.js one, except you get this Docker and Compose YAML file. Your Docker file is a bit more complex installing all of your MongoDB stuff. And then your devcontainer.json has that. And that is the only difference that you see. And what the setting up your Node.js project for Codespaces says within the uh, GitHub docs is basically this. You wanna come in here, you want to make sure you enter your ports that you are using inside the container available locally. And then you have your post create command yarn install or you do npm install. And this is to run commands after the container is created. And actually I'm gonna click on this toast and install Docker, how about that? That's a good idea. But anyway, the overall idea of having a custom image is so that you can whip up your code space and have it perfect for how you want it. As you can see, you can have specific settings for this code space. You can have specific extensions for this code space. And then of course you can have specific ports and all of this other information. You can comment this out and make it a root user instead, so on and so forth. And then all of this was created when we whipped up our custom dev container. It wasn't just the JSON file, it was the YAML file as well as the Docker file. And this is obviously where you can do a lot more as well. So down here where you can see this, we're gonna uncomment all of this. It is where you would implement your MongoDB data. So you would come in here, you'd have your username, which is root, you'd have your password, which is example, and then you'd have your database. And then if you have a cluster or you have a collection within that database, then you would come down here and there are various different ways to go about doing it. But basically you use this volumes MongoDB data to point to the specific data that you want to access if you don't wanna access the entire database as you need up here. Now, in all honesty, I'm not sure if this is necessary or not, it may be. So do your own research there, but this is how you would connect to your MongoDB database going this route. But when it comes to just simply the Node.js project, this is what it suggests. And then you have to come in here. I'm actually going to quit those and then you go ahead and click control shift P again and you type in rebuild and as you can see right here you have the option code spaces rebuild container this there's also a toast that will display down here where my face is and that occurs every single time you change something within this dot dev container directory in any of these files so we're going to rebuild the container rebuild and well now we wait for our container to be built we can view the logs if you want whatever all right so everything built successfully and 
I mean, basically that's it. I do want to test something out real quick. So we're going to go into the client and then we're going to npm start real quick. I want to see if it recognizes the previous uh, dependencies that I installed or if that rebuilt all of that information as well. I think since it's locked that it should stay in there, but okay, yeah, it does. So we're all good there, but pretend that you didn't go ahead and install those dependencies. That is what you would do in one of two ways after you're creating your custom container you can do it even before rebuilding you can do it just like we did before go into whatever directory you need it whether it be globally or in a particular directory and you npm install whatever you need right any of your dependencies all your packages blah 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 or just like you would in any other docker instance you come down here uncomment if you want to install more global node modules and or you just kind of go ahead and npm install whatever you want so you can npm install react scripts globally now it depends on how your your folder set up everything for me is set up you know the front end stuff the client in react that is set up on the front end uh, the other dependencies like morgan that i have on my server side those are all in the server directory as you can see right here so i have different package.json's in all of this different information than I do in the server because I don't need the same but I don't even know if that's a good way to go about it but that's how I'm going about it and this displays because we have uncommented I think this is why it displayed where we at because we uncommented this information and it's recognizing that we are not connected although we are trying to connect so let's just go ahead and comment this stuff out you technically should rebuild after this but I'm just going over this for, you know, try to cover all the bases here. I want to exit out of that, exit out of that. We can exit out of that too. But then there you go. So you can use your Docker file just like you would any other Docker file to install of your dependencies. You can figure out more that has to do with a dev container. And something that you need to remember is that everything that you do in the dev container is on that repo basis. So a lot of what we discussed previously with customizing your VS code environment, what, whether it be setting sync or whether it be dot files, that is on a user basis. That is on me. But whatever I create inside this dot dev container, this is on a repository basis. So I can have all of these extensions be installed on your VS code whenever you open up this repo. It won't be your user of VS code, but it'll be the VS code in the code space that you open for this repository right here so that is what all of this information is for so i have a lot of work to do if i want to get this proper the reason why i didn't want to share the workarounds previously is because that's probably not the best way to go about creating code space for a node.js and mongodb application but i wanted to go uh, cover all the bases when it comes to just a specific node.js application how you can just go ahead and not really worry too much about the configuration files in the dev container.json and hop right into developing your application like you would locally if you weren't too familiar with docker or you're not using docker on your project but if you are using docker obviously you know how to do all of this stuff the only exception is devcontainer.json so i hope you enjoyed this video like it subscribe hit the bell and i'll see y'all here soon hopefully by then my voice has returned to my body